and the country post is gone ever so long. I shall have to wait 24 hours before you can get her answer. I can't help that, says Jane with an inflexible air. She's trusted me, and I'll do my duty by her. As you've stayed away so long, it can't hurt you to stay a little longer. Stayed away so long? Cruel girl. Don't you know that it was she who left me? Whatever she did, I make no doubt she did it for the best, answers Jane, true to the fair young governess whose donations of lace and ribbon, soiled gloves, darned stockings, and friendly smiles had won her heart years ago. See here, Jane, says Alexis, unfolding a five pound note. Here's something to buy you a silk gown for Sundays. Now, don't you think that you could contrive to tell me the address at once? You know my wife wishes to see me. The advertisement says that. No, it don't, answers Jane, taking a tiny slip of paper out of her shabby old portemonnaie. The advertisement says nothing of the kind. She reads as follows. SS to Alexis, you are not forgotten. In all I do, I am faithful to your interests. I look forward to our reunion. Wait and hope, as I do. Write and tell me where you are and what you are doing. Address, SS Post Office, Hale Street, Pimlico. There, you see, exclaims Jane triumphant. There's not a word about wanting to see you. She only wants to hear from you. Heartless woman, mutters Alexis. Yet I'm glad she was just a little anxious to know my fate. I'll go to a coffee house and write to her and bring the letter to you to post. There's the silk gown for you all the same, Jane, to show that I bear no malice. Oh, sir, cries the housemaid, overcome by this generosity. I couldn't think... You needn't think about it. You've only to take the money and buy your gown. I'll go and write my letter. He goes to the nearest coffee house and writes to Sybil. There is a touch of bitterness in the composition, though his wounded heart is full of love for her all the time. Neither exile nor the sense of her unkindness have been strong enough to exclude her from his heart. He may pretend to himself and to his friend Dick Plowden that he has ceased to love his wife, that he seeks his child alone. But the mere fact that she has sought to obtain tidings of him is enough to melt his heart, to change pride and anger to love and pardon. Whatever the exalted sphere in which you now move, he writes, you may be glad to know that your desertion has not quite been the death of me. I have contrived to live, somehow, though indignation against your cruelty has lacerated my heart, and love for the wife who deserted me has proved an incurable disease. I have not starved or been driven to hang myself, and I have come back from the other side of the world because I have a foolish hankering to know the fate of the woman who swore at the altar to love, honor, and obey me, and kept her vow by abandoning me in my darkest hour of need. Where are you, Sybil? And with whom? What has been your reward for deserting me? Has your scheme of life been a wise one? Have your hopes prospered? Write and answer all these questions freely and fully if you recognize the tie which in the sight of God and man makes us two one. Tell me about our child, the infant I have never seen yet whose baby face has haunted my dreams. You have given your babe to the care of strangers, perhaps, but I conclude you have watched over its welfare. Tell me further if there are in your life, prosperous as it may be, some few weaker moments when your heart yearns for reunion with the husband you once loved. But no, love, I will show you an easier way. Do not stop to answer one of these questions. Write, Sybil, from your heart to mine. Tell me in three words to come to you, and I will come. I will come, dear, and all the past, all that you have made me suffer shall be forgotten and forgiven in the rapture of our reunion. Yours forever if you will have it so, Alexis. He is swayed to and fro by diverse passions as he writes this letter. Now all bitterness, now fond, unreasoning love. He has not the courage to read over his effusion, but seals and addresses it hastily and hurries back to Lowther Street. There is no difficulty about